Hello everyone, my name is Mami. Welcome to another episode of New Tapes Piano Lessons. Today I'm going to talk about memorization and it is an important topic for pianists because we are often expected to perform from memory. Since Clara Schumann started this tradition nearly 200 years ago of playing without a score, Morning, morning. We hope that we can somehow learn music and press save as and securely have it stored in our memory. But does it work like that for you? I had a request from June to make a video on how to memorize music and I thought I could share my thoughts on this subject from my own experience of performing with our music. So today I'm going to share my top 5 memorization tips and we'll start from ranking number 5 and gradually count down to number 1. As well as my performances, I post piano lesson videos which I hope will be helpful to your practice sessions, so please consider subscribing to my channel. Now when I thought of this topic of memory, I thought I could talk from two different angles. One is the actual integrity of how to go about memorizing music, such as repetition, having an understanding of the overall journey, structure, key, harmony, cadences, intervals, counterpoint, texture, modulation, sequence, transpositions, musical form, sonata form, binary form, mode. But also there's another layer to it. That is how to keep your memory reliable under pressure. How often does it happen to you? You think you've memorized the piece and you can do it perfectly well in your practice room, but then you forget as soon as you start playing in front of people what you thought you knew so well. It suddenly goes out of the window under pressure. I want to touch on both of these aspects of memorization. I've actually made two videos. This one is going to be more general memorization tips. And in the next video, I will talk specifically about how to keep your memory strong in a pressured situation. At the end of this video, I will present an action plan you can start implementing from today to have your piece memorized more effectively, so do watch until the end. Let's dive into my top 5 memorization tips. Ranking number 5, the memento learning. Do you know the film Memento by Christopher Nolan? Some pianists swear by this memento way of learning, so I decided to include it as one of the tips. In which order do you learn a piece? Do you always go from the beginning? In this memento movie, it is one of the most confusing films that I've ever watched by the way. What you see at the start of the film is what happens eventually, the protagonist taking revenge on the guy who killed his wife. As the film progresses, it comes nearer and nearer to the beginning of the film, as the story is told backwards and at the end of the film you reach the beginning of the story's timeline and find out who the killer was, if the protagonist got the right guy in the end which was shown at the beginning of the film and you end up totally puzzled at the end of this film. Is this a good way of learning a piece? So you practice a piece backwards in sections, starting with the ending of the piece, memorizing the last section first, and then when that's done, learn the penultimate section, and then you go back even more until you reach the beginning. Well, I guess it is good in a way that as you progress in a piece, you will know it better and better. It's not nice, you know the beginning really well, and then as you go deeper into the piece and you plunge into the unknown. This way of learning backwards might seem counterintuitive, and there's a danger of ending up with your mind screwed up like at the end of the Memento movie. I don't normally do this Memento memorization, I tend to do a polo practice. I start from the beginning, then learn the ending, then there's a huge hole in the middle. Whether you start at the beginning or end, what is important is to learn in small manageable sections and I would pre-plan different reference points scattered throughout the piece and practice until I can start from any of these points. So the message here is don't always start from the beginning. Ranking number four, use the fear. In the UK, it is often said that learning music must be fun. Do you agree with that statement? Is it better to have a kind, encouraging teacher or a scary teacher? One summer, I had lessons with a very distinguished teacher in Austria and that changed my life. Let's call him Professor Lee. Not only was he a renowned concert pianist, but he was also a respected scholar and composer and he lived beyond the clouds. 
literally. When he was given lessons for so high up in the Austrian Alps, you can see the clouds below your feet and far away from civilization. It took half an hour drive to the nearest shop and we did not have a car so we were basically trapped on top of the mountain. And he lived in a house painted pink throughout which could have come straight out of a fairy tale. And he lived there with a donkey and over 50 historical pianos, some of them over 250 years old. Professor D had an imposing physical presence and mysterious demeanor. He played with such solemn beauty and the world and his surroundings changed color as soon as he started playing. Music was his way of showing gratitude to the almighty. He said wrong notes for sh in German it is he was seriously scary and if a student ever played a wrong note or had a memory mistake, you know what happened. The kind of terror Professor D inspired in his students was unspeakable. Well, what happened was that if a student ever played a wrong note, there was a foot operative lamp next to him and he would kick it with such force to turn the light off. And one day it broke and we were left in the dark. I'm telling you this story because I was a changed pianist after this experience. I found that I could learn a new piece a whole lot quicker than I had ever thought. I started writing down fingerings on my score on every note because Professor D said, unless you are a genius, write down your fingering. So I did. And the consequence of not doing what he had told us to do and not learning quickly enough was too dreadful to contemplate. None of us wanted to be in a dark room on top of a mountain with the pianos. I just wanted to point out that certain amount of fear can play a big part in accelerated learning. I think learning cannot be just about fun and I'm forever grateful to Professor D for that terrifying experience that made me realize what I was capable of. If you are not fortunate enough to have a frightening teacher, you might have a teacher like me. You can create a scary situation yourself. If you want to get a piece learned and memorized quickly, the best thing you can do is to book a date of a performance and invite people before you can play a piece. Put yourself in a situation that you can escape from, be it on top of an Austrian mountain or have a deadline you cannot move. Then you will somehow manage to memorize the piece. Fear can have a special place in learning. Ranking number three, write down your fingering. In this section, I want to talk about fingering and whether you practice hands separately or together. Professor D insisted on writing down fingering on every note, literally on every note. This could be number one tip because I've never seen him suffer from a memory lapse in concerts or when he taught, when he demonstrated with a, a score in front of him. Now, there's an interesting study from psychology professor Karin James of Indiana University which showed the learning benefit of physically writing down on a piece of paper because it engages the brain's motor pathways. They actually put a MRI scanner while people were either handwriting or typing letters and they found writing by hand improves our ability to remember. To have that connection with pen and paper is brilliant for the memory. Some people omit writing down the obvious fingerings, but I write down everything as a way of making it conscious and to make me remember better. And being consistent with fingering is crucial. Rewiring in the brain can be more difficult than it appears. Sometimes you find a much better fingering and change, but the old fingering can suddenly resurface triumphantly on stage. So stick to the same fingering whenever possible. And another tip for fingering, practice hands together. You may have been told by your teacher to practice hands separately, but if you want to memorize, always practice hands together and memorize two hands working as one unit, one hand informing and triggering the other. Ranking number two, use your emotion. Yes, it is important to work on the muscle memory and that is to repeat enough times until your hands know the pattern. But do your practice sessions look like pressing the repeat button countless times? A famous study at the University of Michigan by Klein Smith and Kaplan indicated a substantial relation between arousal during learning and subsequent retention of the learned information. In other words, 
If you are emotionally moved, you will remember. Everyone remembers the first time you kissed the person you loved. You can memorize a piece better if you are intellectually and emotionally engaged, and I will tell you in a minute how to do this. My teacher Bernard Roberts had this lovely saying about performing music. He said it is about the heart and intellect rolled in one single deed. This is about learning with imagination that each phrase has a personal meaning to you. Use stories if that helps, or it could be physical sensations or feeling each harmony produces. It could be words, orchestral sounds you imagine, as well as knowing the overall structure and understanding of key and harmony. Cadences, intervals, counterpoint, texture, modulation, sequence, transpositions, musical form, sonata form, binary form, mode. Practicing with engaged mind is totally different from simply repeating the piece indefinitely until it sticks in the hands. Ranking number one. Use the visual memory. When people talk of the visual memory, I'm never sure whether they mean the visual memory of the printed score or is it the memory of how your hands look on the keyboard. And it is important to make that distinction. I don't have a photographic memory, so to me, how my hands look on the keyboard is more significant than memorizing the look of the printed score. I consciously try to memorize how my hands feel on the keys, how they move, choreography of the hands and the shape and spacing of each chord while at the same time listening to the sound but always doing small manageable sections with the intention of memorizing. I want to end by quoting George Eliot which popped up in my motivational quotes up. Great things are not done by impulse but by a series of small things brought together. It is so true about learning and memorizing music and no one can give a better advice than that. So we've gone through the top five memorization tips and I'm now going to summarize what we've talked about today with an action plan to go with. First of all, I presented the idea of memento learning. That is the idea of learning a piece backwards in sections, but more importantly, in whatever order you learn a piece, have different reference points that you can start from. Don't always start from the beginning. Then we talked about how fear and pressure can accelerate learning. You might want to decide a deadline and create a situation you can escape from, such as inviting your friends to a mini concert before you're ready. Then we talked about the benefit of physically writing down the fingering as you learn, as an act of memorizing, and always stick to the same finger and practice hands together. In a practice session, have both emotion and intellect engaged. When you are emotionally moved, you tend to remember better. A practice session should not be simply about pressing the repeat button. And finally, work on your visual memory and with the intention of memorizing, always in small sections. Thank you very much for watching. If you have found it interesting or helpful, please spread words to your friends and share on social media. I hope you will watch my next video about how to keep your memory reliable under pressure. And if you hit the subscribe button, you will be notified when a new video is uploaded. If you have any questions or you might have other tips about memorization that I missed, please comment below. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time. Bye!